Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at Yuzu Emulator, covering all of its latest awesome upgrades and believe me, there is some absolutely amazing stuff included in this video. In the last few weeks, we've gotten literally some game changing updates that completely change the way you're going to play your games on this emulator. These things include their brand new error OSK and software keyboard update. This thing is literally unreal. It basically re-implements the exact same Nintendo Switch native on-screen keyboard. We're going to be taking a look at that in just a moment. On top of this change, which in itself is absolutely huge, they've also introduced a host of GPU optimizations, including a brand new GPU accelerated texture decoder, which hugely improves the way you play tons of games on Yuzu. On top of all of these changes, they have also added fixes for tons of annoying stutter and slowdown issues, the main one which was affecting Super Smash Bros Ultimate and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Smash and Zelda are basically just perfectly smooth from start to finish now, with the fix for Super Smash Bros Ultimate being especially beneficial for any players who at least semi-competitively play it over on the Smash Parsec servers. Let's kick things off by taking a look at the brand new OSK and error overlays which have already been added to the latest mainline builds. To demonstrate this brand new OSK software keyboard, we're going to be using Pokemon Sword. You can see here this is the very start of the game where you select your language and then your character. And as you can see, this is the brand new OSK or on-screen keyboard overlay which they have added in their latest builds. This allows you to enter your names or any text in any games that require it. Like I said, this is a literal game changer for anyone who wants to just play their games with a controller, be it on your couch in your living room or just on your main computer screen. As I said, this works perfectly with controller, but it also works with keyboard input and mouse input via touch emulation support. Also included with these brand new overlays is the inclusion of error message controller support meaning that if you do get an error in gameplay, one at least that doesn't crash the emulator, you can just press A or X on your controller, close the error, then again just proceed with gameplay as if the error never happened in the first place. This new update also brings with it full support for the native asynchronous software keyboard. This async software keyboard is used in games like Dark Souls Remastered, Daemon X Machina and Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. As you can see here in Monster Hunter, when I enter my name it no longer crashes or freezes the emulator. This new update and addition of the asynchronous software keyboard has made Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate fully playable on this emulator. Yet another awesome improvement comes in the form of one to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now this improvement comes to its local multiplayer feature. Previously, when entering a local multiplayer, be it in Grand Prix, VS Race, regardless of what game mode you were playing in local multi, as soon as you pressed OK for controller configuration on this screen, the game would just softlock. This softlocking or crashing problem has now been completely fixed, making Mario Kart 8 Deluxe fully playable in all single player or local multiplayer modes. Moving swiftly along from these quality of life changes, we're going to be taking a look at some GPU optimizations, specifically a brand new update which has introduced GPU accelerated texture decoding which greatly improves the gameplay experience in games like Super Mario Odyssey, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Luigi's Mansion 3 or Astral Chain. We're going to be using this final title, Astral Chain, to show you exactly how much the experience has improved thanks to the introduction of this brand new texture decoder. Before we take a look at this improvement, Astral Chain is yet another game to see the benefit of the brand new OSK, but as I just said, it is also one of the games that sees the greatest improvement thanks to this new GPU texture decoder. If you're not aware, this title uses Adaptive Scalable Texture Compression or ASTC textures, the decompression of which is currently not supported on either AMD or NVIDIA GPUs. Since decompression is not natively possible on these GPUs, decompression previously had to take place on the CPU, which, as you could guess, is not really designed for decompressing such textures. Due to slow CPU decompression of these textures, it resulted in large stutters and slowdown in gameplay that would happen every single time you encountered a new ASTC texture. 
Let's do a quick 30 second comparison of the before and after, which basically gives us the best possible look at the differences in speed between CPU and GPU ASTC texture decoding. As you could clearly see in that comparison between CPU and GPU decoded texture, it is infinitely smoother. The games that heavily use this ASTC texture are now greatly improved. As I previously said, these titles include Super Mario Odyssey, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Astral Chain and Luigi's Mansion 3, all of which have seen dramatic improvements to performance and stability in areas that utilize these ASTC textures. Speaking of performance and stability improvements, we saw a hell of a big one in the past three weeks where games like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Super Smash Bros Ultimate have seen some of the biggest improvements of all. First up, we're going to take a look at The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which thanks to the performance improvements given to us in the recent texture and buffer cache updates, is capable of running at a locked 60 frames per second, albeit on a very high-end CPU, something like an R5 5600X or an Intel 10th Gen 10600K. However, there was previously an issue with this emulator's JIT that caused this game to have constant slowdowns on its latest update 1.6.0 these slowdowns would happen every 3 or 4 minutes and as we all know, slowdowns when you're emulating a game is probably one of the most annoying things you can face as a user. Thankfully, these horrible slowdowns which only happened on updates between 1.3.0 and 1.6.0 have now been completely fixed, making The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild fully playable and smooth as butter on all of its latest updates which bodes very very well for the release of Breath of the Wild 2 or Breath of the Wild's sequel, whatever you want to call it, whenever it releases on the Nintendo Switch in the distant future. It's not only The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild that saw a huge improvement to its stability and performance drops, as it so happened, the exact same problem relating to the emulator's JIT was also greatly impacting the playability or at least the competitive playability of Super Smash Bros Ultimate. Previously, as with Breath of the Wild, Smash Ultimate suffered the exact same problem where mid-match slowdowns could completely spoil the experience or match. Thankfully, this problem has now been 100% remedied. To test this myself, I left Smash Bros Ultimate running overnight for 8 hours on my system, running an 8 player match on this exact same map. In my testing, the framerate did not drop one digit from 60 frames per second in that entire gameplay period which is a stark comparison to what it was like before, where every 3 to 4 minutes within a match you would get these horrible, horrible drops to 5 or 10 frames per second. Well that's pretty much all of the optimizations and upgrades we're going to be taking a look at in this video. Make sure that you stay tuned to my channel for some exciting updates coming from this emulator in the next few weeks. They are working on a brand new rewrite of their shader decompiler which is going to dramatically improve literally hundreds of games on this emulator, including games like Fire Emblem Three Houses, Hyrule Warrior Age of Calamity, Persona 5 Strikers and so on. This update I literally cannot wait for you guys to get your hands on and as soon as it is out, as per usual, I will do an update video covering all of its most major improvements. For now at least, that's going to be it for this video guys. Once again, thank you all very much for watching, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you enjoy these kinds of videos, please consider pledging to my Patreon, a link to which you will find down in this description. Each and every one of those pledges or donations greatly helps my channel, so I want to give a massive, massive thank you to each and every one of my Patreon supporters. As I said, that's going to be it for this update. As always, remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see all future videos from me.